Um, so your patient is an 80 year old male with a history of hypertension, chronic kidney disease, prior GI bleed. Uh, and he's presenting to your service with lower extremity weakness and is found on duplex ultrasound to have an acute occlusive right lower extremity DVT. Your resident astutely tells you that he wants to start this patient on a DOAC. The question is, which DOAC would you choose for this patient? Would you choose A, rivaroxaban with a 20 milligram BID load followed by 15 milligrams thereafter? Would you choose B, apixaban with a load followed by five milligrams thereafter? C, rivaroxaban maintenance dosing at 15 milligrams once a day? Or D, warfarin? Feel free to, oops, <laughs> um, shout out your answers. I can't seem to see the chat box. Oh, wait, there it is. B, <laughs> I love it. Does anyone feel differently? Okay, in the interest of time, I'm gonna say that for this particular patient, B is the most correct answer. And hopefully I can convince you as to why over the coming slides. So for this Fast Facts Friday, we're gonna be reviewing the DOAC safety profiles. Uh, and I think it's important to preface by saying that to date, there are no randomized trials comparing any of the DOACs directly against one another. Um, so all of the data that we have or that I'm sharing with you today is gonna to be comparing the DOACs in like landmark cardiology trials to warfarin. And the three areas of safety that we'll be covering today include rates of major bleeding, rates of intracranial bleeding, and rates of GI bleeding. So let's take a look at major bleeding first. And for most landmark trials, major bleeding is defined as either fatal bleeding, bleeding that results in compartment syndrome, or most relevant to us, bleeding that results in a hemoglobin drop of greater than two points. Um, and listed below this, title header, we see the different DOACs as well as warfarin with their respective hazard ratios. So recall a hazard ratio is basically describing the frequency with which an event occurs. So major bleeding in the experimental group versus the control group. So say here on the left is rivaroxaban. It has a hazard ratio of greater than one, which means that in patients who are anticoagulated with rivaroxaban, they had higher rates of major bleeding than did patients who are anticoagulated with warfarin. Meanwhile, on the far right, we see apixaban has a hazard ratio of just of less than one or 0.69, which means that patients anticoagulated with apixaban had lower rates of major bleeding when compared to patients anticoagulated with warfarin. Uh, next, we'll turn our attention to intracranial bleeding where we see, I, I think this is like the most feared side effect of prescribing a blood thinner to an elderly patient who may have a risk of falling and hitting their head. Um, and I think the interesting thing for me here is that all of the DOACs perform better than warfarin. All of them have hazard ratios of less than one, meaning that the rates of intracranial bleeding, whether you choose rivaroxaban, apixaban, edoxaban, uh, it occurs less commonly than with, in patients anticoagulated with warfarin. And finally, we'll turn our attention to rates of GI bleeding. Um, this is where I think it gets kind of interesting. We see that basically all of the DOACs, with the exception of apixaban and dose-reduced adoxaban, have higher rates of GI bleeding when compared to warfarin. The reason for this is not clear um, and is actually being fleshed out further. We, we are finding that this, these results are being replicated in small observational trials. Um, one reason this is hypothesized to occur is that rivaroxaban, dibigatran, and adoxaban stay in the GI lumen longer and where they may exert like a topical anticoagulant effect. Um, okay, so other things to think about before you prescribe a DOAC to a patient include the dosing frequency. Recall rivaroxaban and adoxaban are dosed just once a day, so that may be ideal for your patients with adherence issues. Also recall that if you are prescribing a rivaroxaban, um, it must be taken with food as this influences the drug's bioavailability pretty significantly. And finally, always watch the kidneys um, because all of the DOACs are at least partly renally cleared and only a pixaban is approved in end-stage renal disease. 
So just to recap what we've learned uh, on this Friday, uh, recall that apixaban of the DOAX is thought to have lower rates of major bleeding, intracranial bleeding, and GI bleeding, and therefore may be the most ideal anticoagulant option in your elderly patients or those at increased risk of bleeding. Recall apixaban is the only DOAC approved in end-stage renal disease, uh, but rivaroxaban and adoxaban are dosed once a day, and that may be ideal for patients struggling with adherence. And if you choose rivaroxaban, remember its uptake or its bioavailability is dependent on your patient's oral intake. Also remember, there are still some clinical situations where we should choose warfarin over a DOAC, and some of those uh, circumstances include valvular AFib, patients with mechanical heart valves, patients with child QC cirrhosis, morbid obesity, and antiphospholipid syndrome. And that's it. Happy to take any.